Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So on behalf of our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada, we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Bhagavad Gita and today we are on chapter 16, the divine and demoniac nature. So, in the previous chapter, remember, well, actually going back to chapter 14, we heard about the three modes of material nature, and we were encouraged to cultivate the mode of goodness and avoid the mode of passion and ignorance. And then on chapter 15, we heard about the banyan tree. The example was given about the banyan tree with the branches down and the roots up. And it there was described how the those in the mode of goodness would be more in the upper parts of the tree and those who are more of the mode of passion and ignorance they're in the lower part of the tree so now in in chapter 16, Lord Krishna is going to describe to us how there are two natures only. Divine, one is called divine or the Devi Sampad and the other is the demoniac nature, Asuric Sampad. So we're going to jump a little bit to verse number 6 and we'll come back to the earlier verses at, before the end of the class. So Lord Krishna is speaking to Arjuna and he's telling Arjuna, O son of Prita, in this world there are two kinds of created beings. One is called divine and the other is demoniac. I have already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. So there are two kinds only. Some I, I, I was presenting this before to someone and they, they protested. They said, why only two kinds? There should be more. I may not be a devotee, but I don't want to be a demon. I don't want to be classified as a demon. I may not be a very good devotee, but I shouldn't be a demon. <laughs> so they said there should be more than two kinds of beings. So 
So Lord Krishna has, in, in the beginning of the chapter, Lord Krishna began describing the divine qualities and we'll look at these at the end of the class. Actually, most of the chapter, Lord Krishna is describing the demoniac nature. Mm -hmm. So here's text number seven. Pravritim cha nivritim cha janana vidur asuraha na sojam na pi cha charo na satyam te shuvityate. Those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness, nor proper behavior, nor truth is found in them. So, <laughs> this is a very clear description of the demoniac nature. They don't know what is what sh what should be done, what should not be done. Therefore they do a lot of bad a lot of sinful things. They don't think about it. It doesn't they don't think this is sinful. They just go ahead and do it. They act without thinking. <laughs> Just like people eat all kinds of terrible kinds of foodstuffs, they have all kinds of animals killed for the satisfaction of their tongue. And then they, they will take alcohol, they may even take drugs, they will do all kinds of sinful things. They don't give importance to cleanliness, either externally or internally. The behavior is not pleasing and not civilized. And they, they're not, they're, they often don't speak the truth. And so this is something of the nature of the people who are asuric or the demoniac nature. They, will, they can speak philosophy, but they will speak philosophy for their own sense gratification. There's a story how a young boy died in the forest one day and the family, his family were very upset to see the, the death of their child, young boy. So they were preparing to perform the funeral of the child. And at that time, a, ja a jackal appeared. And the jackal began to speak to the people and said, Oh yes, your child had such nice qualities. You know, don't cremate the body yet. Go and sit down and think about his qualities and come back tomorrow and do the cremation. And 
Because the jackal eats in the night. So the jackal was hoping if they would go away in the night he could eat the body of the young boy. But then a vulture came, and a vulture came and completely defeated everything the jackal said, and said, oh, there's no reason to lament for the boy. His soul is gone. The soul is the real boy, the real person, not the body. The body is just flesh. Don't worry about the body. The, the, the real soul has gone. So there's no need to bother. Just go away and meditate on this eternal soul. In this, in this way, the, the vulture was hoping he could eat the body. So this is the demonic nature. They will speak philosophy for their own sense gratification. So those who are demons are very expert to do this. All right, going go ahead, here's text 13 to 15. The demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today, and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now, and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him, and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful and happy. I am the richest man, surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. So, you can see on the right side, there's a couple of pictures of some powerful people. You have Duryodhan, who was a great warrior. He fought with Bhima at the end of the battle of Kurukshetra. And at the bottom you have a picture of ten-headed Ravan, who was also very powerful. 
ราก็ตามสไลด์นี้นะคะก็สามารถเห็นบุคคลที่มีพลังนามากสองคนได้นะคะภาพข้างบนเนี่ยเป็นภาพของยูโยดานนะคะที่มีพลังอำนาจมากแล้วก็มีคุณสมบัติหลายอย่างแล้วก็ข้างล่างเนี่ยก็เป็นราวนะนะคะที่เป็นมารตัวนี้เหมือนกันแล้วมีพลังอำนาจแล้วก็ยิงยโสพลังอำนาจของคุณ So these are classic demons they are very well known demons in the scriptures มารเหล่านี้นะคะเป็นพวกเขาเนี่ยเป็นมารที่มีชื่อเสียงโด่งดังที่ทุกคนเนี่ยรู้จักกันเป็นมารอย่างเป็นทางการ So in the Kali Yuga, we don't have people on the level of Ravan or Duryodhan, but we do have people with the similar mentality. We can understand. From the verses here, the s l o k a s here, which are given, how the demoniac have very strong material desires to get power and to get wealth. And if we, if there's some enemy. Then the demonic, the, the demon, he will have him killed. He will just have him killed to get rid of him, so that he cannot disturb the activities of the the demon. And the demoniac person is so foolish. He thinks that I am the controller. He he's thinking everything is happening under my direction. And then he thinks everything is for my enjoyment. It's all mine. It belongs to me. So it's for my enjoyment. And then he's thinking, I am, I am perfect. I have no bad fault. No, have I have no bad qualities. Everything about me is good. And I'm very strong. You can see the pictures. d u r y o d h a n and Ravan are both very powerfully built, so they're thinking. The demon is thinking, "I'm very powerful. My body is very powerful." And he's thinking, "I'm happy. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying my wealth. I'm enjoying my power." He's thinking nobody is as happy. No one's equal to me. I am the greatest. So this is the nature of the mode of passion and ignorance that we think like this. So we have to be very careful if we're in the mode of passion and ignorance. Then, in the next life, we'll probably come back to the earth kingdom and take either either we'll take a human body or we'll take a lower body like an animal and we enter into the lower species of life. So this is the nature of the mode of ignorance. And it's a nature of the mode of ignorance. 
And the mode of ignorance, this means you have the demoniac qualities, they're demons. We may not be big demons, but we're little demons. <laughs> So within everyone, there's some good qualities and there's some bad qualities. It's just like in our body there are two wolves. One wolf is a good wolf and one wolf is a bad wolf. So we have to be careful which one we feed. Do we feed the divine, the good qualities, or do we feed the demon, the bad qualities? All right, going on to text 19 and 20. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, I perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence, into various demoniac species of life. Attaining repeated birth amongst the species of demonic life, O son of Kunti, such persons never get can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable type of existence. So Lord Krishna is describing the result of people who become who, who become full of the mode of passion and ignorance. And such people, they, although they have the human body, then, and the, as they progress, if they remain in the mode of ignorance, and next they will go on to take one, some of the lower animal body, like the dog or the, the animal in the jungle. And Lord Krishna describes, they will take birth in these bodies again and again. Because they don't, they, they don't want to be a human being, they don't want to be a civilized human being and to follow scripture and act according to religious principles. So they get their desires and their desire, they get the animal body. And they stay in animal bodies for a long time, taking birth again and again in different animal bodies. Going ahead, text 21. Because hearing about these qualities, one will think how to avoid them. When we hear about the demoniac qualities and how these demons have to take birth in an animal body again and again, 
we will think, what do I need to do to avoid that? I don't want that to happen to me. So text 21 describes what we need to do to avoid that. Trividam narakashyaidam dvara naranan atmana kama krodas tata lobas tasmat etatrayam chagat. There are three gates leading to this hell lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to the degradation of the soul. So we have to understand that the importance of avoiding these three things, lust, anger and greed. And the most dangerous is lust. Now when we speak of lust, we don't just mean, you know, man and women, the, the, the lust a man has for a woman. We don't mean only like that. Lust is just the desire to enjoy material objects. So the lust is the beginning of the degradation of the soul. We become lusty for something, and then when we get it, we want more. We become greedy for more. So from lust can come greed. And then, if we don't get what we wanted, we had a desire for something, we didn't get it, then very easily we become angry. So you can see both anger and greed are related to lust. Anger and greed are like the younger brothers of lust. Lust is the older brother, and then comes the anger and the greed. So, so we're warned here by Lord Krishna, so we must be very careful to avoid these three things. How can we avoid anger and greed and lust? We have to control the mind and senses. We, if, if, we become, feel, if we feel ourselves becoming angry or we observe how we're becoming more greedy, we have to change, we have to go away from that place or change the situation and take shelter, grab our bead bag and go out and chant the holy name and go for a walk in the park and chant. <laughs> So 
อาจจะไปเดินไปสวดมนต์เดินหรือเอาไปที่อื่นเพื่อให้ตัวเองเนี่ย Or else, pick up a book and start reading aloud. Read out aloud. Pick up a Bhagavad Gita or pick up a volume of Bhagavatam or something, and read out aloud. And don't stop until you feel yourself controlled. Until you feel your mind becoming more peaceful. แล้วก็ไม่ต้องหยุดให้อ่านไปเรื่อยๆจนตนเองรู้สึกว่าโอเคแล้วจนเองแบบว่าหายโกรธแล้วไม่มีอารมณ์โกรธทางอยู่ Because lust and anger and greed are taking us into the darkest regions of ignorance. เพราะว่าราคาโรคและโกรธเนี่ยมันจะทำให้เราเนี่ยตกลงมันเป็นหนทางที่จะนำเราไปสู่อารมณ์ And we want to be very careful to avoid these three things. Okay, going ahead. Text number twenty-three. Yashastra vidhi mudrajya vartate kama karata na sasadim avapnoti na sukam na paramgatim. He who dis discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims. Attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Uti yukle kham sat sor kham prave la tap tam amne jai kham tod e jamai balu thun kham sukul kham suk le chuk chuk mai plai thang sin su. So Lord Krishna describes uh, the importance of following the instructions of the scriptures. <laughs> It is called the Shastra Vidhi. Shastra Vidhi, yeah, Shastra Vidhi m Utrijya. So Shastra Vidhi, the instructions, the the rules of the scriptures, and Utrijya, you give them up, you don't follow them. So it's very bad. And you can see in the picture on the right what we mean when people are doing sinful activities. They're doing things like gambling and meat eating and intoxication and illicit sex. So when people engage in these sinful activities, which are against the scriptures, it brings them problems. Be because they are acting in the mode of passion and ignorance, they cannot get any good result. So Lord Krishna describes nasa sedim. You cannot get siddhi. You cannot get perfection. You cannot get any kind of perfection. There are there are eight there are eight kinds of yoga perfections. You're not going to get any of them. And then Krishna said, "Na sukam." You're not going to get happiness either. And ev everyone wants, everyone wants happiness. Everyone would like to be happy. We want happiness, but you're not going to get it because you didn't follow the scriptures. 
แต่ว่าถ้าเกิดไม่ปฏิบัติตามหลักของพระเวทแล้วเนี่ยก็จะไม่ได้ไม่ได้รับความสุข anaparamgatim you're not going to get to the supreme destination In other words, you're not going to get out of the material world. So you can see, Lord Krishna is encouraging us to follow the teachings of the scriptures. If we don't follow, then we just bring ourselves a lot into a lot of trouble. Okay, and here's the last verse. One should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty. By the regulation of the scriptures, knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. ดังนั้นเขาควรเข้าใจว่าอะไรคือหน้าที่และอะไรไม่ใช่หน้าที่ด้วยกฎแห่งพระเวทโดยด้วยกฎแห่งพระคัมภีร์เมื่อรู้กฎเกณฑ์เหล่านี้แล้วเขาควรปฏิบัติเพื่อตนเอง So we all have a duty, and we should know what our duty is by being guided by the scriptures. Actually, the scriptures tell us that we are all meant to be eternally the servants of Lord Krishna. So, according to the regulations of the scriptures, we should act for the service of Krishna. And if we follow the rules and regulations, then we can be elevated. We can be elevated to a higher form of life, higher planets where they live a long time and enjoy opulence. Or one may be elevated out of the material world into the kingdom of God. So nobody can can be elevated if he disobeys the teachings of the scriptures. Lord Krishna has given the laws. He's given the rules. He's told us what we should do. We have to follow. But those people who are demoniac. They don't want to hear the scriptures. They don't want to take instruction from anyone. The demon thinks, "I know everything. I know by my own power. You don't need to tell me anything." So because of because they think like that, so their life ends in disaster. So the demon, the demoniac people have all kinds of misunderstandings about the purpose of life. And but, 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 but
One man said to me, I'll show you God. He said, look, and he took out some money. He said, here, this is God. So for, for the demoniac people, they think like that. They think money is everything, but with money I will enjoy, I'll be happy. But we see some of the richest people were the most unhappy people. So we have to understand the true nature of the material world. We should know what is good and what is bad. So here, this is the first verse from the 16th chapter, and Lord Krishna began the chapter by listing 26 qualities which are divine qualities. So the, these qualities are for people according to their different ashrams and their different varnas. There'd be different qualities for people in different ashrams and different varnas. Right? Just like the first quality, abhaya, meaning fearlessness. So this is a quality for sannyasis. Right. Sannyasis meant to go everywhere without worrying about where he will eat or where he will stay, just like Prabhupada went to America. Then purification of one's existence and cultivation, purification of one's existence, that's for everyone. All the different ash ashrams and varnas should want to purify their existence. Then cultivation of spiritual knowledge, that's meant for sannyasis, they're meant to have cultivated spiritual knowledge. And charity is supposed to be meant for grihastas. And then you have qualities like study of the Vedas, that's for the brahmacharis. And austerity, that's meant for vanaprastas. But everybody, all devotees, we need to practice some austerity. So many of these qualities, they apply to everyone. Uh, let's see, there are some things like vigor. It mentions, uh, what is it? Mm, well, clean, cleanliness, that's for everyone, especially brahmanas and vaishyas. And quality of being able to forgive others, 
Well, that's for all the devotees, but especially for Kshatriyas. And then it mentions vigor. Vigor means one should be very vigorous, very powerful, very uh, strong. This is a quality for Kshatriyas. And that last one, the freedom from the passion for honor, that's meant for the sudras basically. So Lord Krishna describes these different 26 qualities. And he told Arjuna, he told Arjuna he didn't have to worry because he was born with the good qualities. And Srila Prabhupada describes it's important for us also to produce good quality children. That if we do the good samskars, if we do birth ceremony, samskars for the, for the birth of a child, then you get good quality children with good, good with all these good qualities. So here's text number five. The transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the demoniac qualities make for bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. So because Arjuna is about to fight a battle and he knows he's going to be fighting and killing people, so he may be worrying that maybe I've got these demoniac qualities myself. But Lord Krishna tells him, no, you don't have to worry. You have, you have the divine qualities. So you can see in the picture the, the man in the middle, and then on one side is the demon, on the other side is the godly quality. So there's the divine and there's the demoniac nature, which is in both. And we have to make the choice, which side are we going to cultivate, which side are we going to allow to develop, the devotee or the demon? <laughs> So someone may be, de may, may be a bit of a demon, a demoniac in the beginning, but they can become devotee, they can be changed by Krishna consciousness. Yes, the more we engage in acts of the mode of goodness, then we cultivate the good qualities. So wake up early in the morning, take bath three times a day, all of these things, it helps us to keep the mode of goodness. So 
รวมถึงความอยู่ในระดับแห่งความดี Okay. Here's just to finish off. Here's a quote here. The holy name of Krishna can deliver the most sinful of all sinners, as exemplified by the pastime of Jagai and Madhai. The holy name can remove the demoniac qualities in our heart. <laughs> สามารถทำให้บุคคลเนี่ยหลุดพ้นจากความบาปได้ตัวอย่างที่เราสามารถเห็นได้ก็จากในลีลาของจากายมาได้ที่พระนามของกฤษณ์เนี่ยสามารถพระนามของกฤษณ์สามารถทำให้ธรรมชาติมารที่อยู่ในใจเราเนี่ยลบเลือนไปได้ So Jagai and Madhai were to Brahmanas, they were born in Brahmana family, but they had become very degraded and very sinful. Actually, it said there was no sin they had not performed. They did everything, so many sinful things. มันไม่มีบาปไหนเลยที่เขาเนี่ยไม่ได้ทำเขาทำบาปแบบทุกประการ So Lord Nityananda went to them and he asked them to chant the holy name and when he went there they were both drunk and one of them took a pot of wine and he hit Lord Nityananda in the head with it แล้วก็พระองค์เจ้านิจนันดาเนี่ยก็เข้าไปหาพวกเขาบอกว่าช่วยสวดมนต์สวดภาวนาพระนามหน่อยแล้วคนหนึ่งในคนหนึ่งในนั้นเนี่ยเขาก็บอกนายเท่าพูดอะไรแล้วก็ขวดวายเนี่ยปาใส่เราจะจำไม่เจอ And he he hit him with in the head with it and it drew blood from his head แล้วปรากฏว่าเลือดก็ไหลนะคะจากศีรษะของเราจะไม่เจอ So Lord Chaitanya was very angry, and he came there. And Lord Chaitanya was going to; he was calling for the Sudarshan Chakra. He was going to kill Jagai and Madhai. He was so upset that they had struck; they they had hit Lord Nityananda. They injured him. So Lord Chaitanya was going to punish them for that. But Lord Nityananda begged Lord Chaitanya to forgive them. So Lord Chaitanya agreed to forgive them, but he told them. They now they have to chant the holy name and they have to stop all their bad habits. They have to stop all their sins and they have to become good devotees. And they did. They never again did any bad thing. They became very humble and very pious. And they give service to the devotees. Okay. So now, questions? Any questions tonight? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Tata Vatpanam, please accept my humble obeisances. Ajara Kapi Jatham, Thung Salop, Ti Yi Sip Song, Sip Hok Tut Song Song. Ti Maharaj Adibai, Rakha Pen Ti Chai Pong Pham Prod, Lepo Pham Lo, Pham Lo, Pham Lo, Pham Lo, Ti Mi Kham Tham, Ya Jha Tham, Wa, ถ้าเกิดว่าแบบพี่เคยได้ยินแบบรู้จักสาววงคนหนึ่งนะคะเขาก็ปฏิบัติในปฏิบัติดีแต่ว่าเขาเหมือนว่ามีความโกรธง่ายเพราะว่าเขาคาดหวังว่า
จะให้ทุกคนซัพพอร์ตเราหรือว่าคาดหวังว่าทุกคนอาจจะต้องทําอย่างนั้นอย่างนี้กับเขาอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะถือว่าความโกรธแบบเนี้ยค่ะจะถามว่ามันคือคือเข้าขายอยู่ในราคาหรือเปล่าค่ะยังมหาลัยอธิบายให้ฟังนิดนึงค่ะแล้วก็ความโกรธนี้มันเป็นธรรมชาติของมันไหมทั้งนั้นที่แบบปฏิบัติในในเนี้ยเข้าใจไหมคือเขาไม่ได้โกรธเหมือนคือคือเขาก็ปฏิบัติแบบสาวกแบบเขาไม่ได้มีธรรมชาติของมาทั้งสามข้ออะไรเงี้ยแต่ว่าเขาอาจจะแบบโกรธง่ายเข้าใจไหมเข้าใจเขาโกรธง่ายแล้วก็เหมือนแบบคาดหวังว่าคนอื่นอาจจะแบบทรีทเขาดีอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแต่พอผิดหวังเขาก็จะแบบนี่เงาโกรธง่ายอะไรอย่างเงี้ยจะถามว่าตรงเนี้ยแบบเหมือนกับว่าเป็นธรรมชาติของมานไหมแล้วว่ามันเกี่ยวกับราคาหรือเปล่าเพราะว่ามหาลาเพราะว่าราคาเป็นพี่ชายคนโตใช่ไหมโอเคขอบคุณมากค่ะอะไรกันช่ะ Uh, she like to ask about uh, from the sloka that you explain uh, last anger and greed. So she have experience with one devotee. She been practicing for quite a long long time, but she is easily get angry. Maybe things doesn't go how she expected or something like that, and then she easily get angry. So. It's because of uh, she have lust, or why she is having that anger, and it, it will she go with the category of uh, demonic, or how how should we understand this? Yes, well, we have to understand that both the good qualities and the bad qualities are there within everyone. <laughs> So she's a devotee. She's become a devotee. She's practicing Krishna consciousness, and if she goes on practicing, then gradually she will get rid of this tendency to become angry. Yeah, some people, like there are some very nice devotees, even very senior devotees, sometimes they get angry. But sometimes the anger is justified. Sometimes it's not wrong for them to get angry. Because anger can be used in the service of Krishna. Now sometimes Srila Prabhupada would get angry at us. We would do things wrong and Prabhupada would get upset with us. But he would not become controlled by the anger. He would con he would use the anger to instruct us. He would let us know that he's not pleased, that we haven't pleased him, that we haven't done it well. So he's making use of the anger to instruct us. Hanuman and Arjuna also used anger in the service of Krishna. Arjuna fought in the battle of Kurukshetra. He had to use some anger to fight. And similarly, when Hanuman fought against Ravan in the battle of Lanka, Hanuman would get angry. So 
so, so anger can be used by the advanced devotee. But one has to be the master of the senses to use the anger properly. They may express anger for a short time, but it shouldn't be a long time. They shouldn't maintain the angry mood for a long time. So somebody, so somebody is coming to Krishna consciousness and they get angry, you know, maybe because they're, they've not practiced Krishna consciousness for a very long time, so they have not perfected everything, so they still have some bad habits, like they get angry easily. But because they're doing good sadhana, because they're very strict in their sadhana, one day gradually they'll get rid of that anger. So you cannot criticize them because they get angry, because they're chanting Hare Krishna, they're following the regulative principles, they're doing everything properly. Only thing is they, they get angry sometimes. So you cannot criticize them for that. Just like somebody may be dirty, they, you know, their body's all dirty, but if they're in the shower taking a, a bath, you cannot criticize them for being dirty. Give, just give them some time and they'll get clean. So in the same way, the, young, the lady you say, she gets angry, so give her, she's a devotee, she's practicing, give her time, gradually she'll get over it. Go ahead. Yeah, any other question? Uh, yes, Guru, one more from Mother Vipavani. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. This is Muhammad of the Senses. Ajana Ham Ham, me to tea her in my wa dark lot keeper her. Tea holy up, what I'm rap, Roman cup, Dalapat, me long yaham. Guy been laha. Uh, so her question is, as we uh, studied yesterday that everything from spiritual world is uh, opposite in this material world. As like uh, the love, she heard one time that the love from spiritual world, when it comes to this material world, then it's become lust. So it that mean that there is no love exists in this world, and only lust. Well, love means to Krishna and in relation to Krishna. <laughs> So we can love one another, we can love things in relation to Krishna, if we understand that they're also part of Krishna. Just like 
we have love for a person. You know, we have love for a person, young man loves a young woman, but what he, the, who is the person? The real person is not the body, the person is the soul. It's the soul who he really loves, not the body. When the person dies, you can't love the dead body, the soul's gone. You don't have love for the body because it's the soul which we have to be loved. And that soul is a part of Krishna. And the person who we love more than anyone is Krishna. And we are all part and parcel of Krishna. This was shown in the pastime of Lord Brahma, when Lord Brahma stole away the cows and the cowherd boys. So Lord Brahma had taken away all the cows and the cowherd boys, so Krishna expanded himself and took their place. So all the boys who went home, they were not really the sons of their mother, it was actually Krishna who had taken their place. But the mothers love Krishna more than they love their own son. In the same way with the calves, when the, all the calves came back, the cows loved the calves more than their own calves because these calves were actually Krishna in the form of a calf. So in the same way we live together, you know, we have relationships, men and women, but we don't really know each other where our relationship is based on the body. But the body is not the real person. It's the soul within the body which is the person. So it's it's the soul which we really have the relationship with. And that soul is actually part of Krishna. And the person who we love is actually Krishna. But if we're thinking, I love this body, I love that person's body, that's not, that's ignorance, that's illusion, that's wrong. Uh, 
อันนั้นนี่มันเป็นอวิชชาเป็นความหลงเข้าใจไหมคะมาดูวิภาวณีเข้าใจค่ะ yes guru maharaj thank you very clear and very good answer thank you Hare Krishna 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 Where in the scriptures this four regulative principle is uh, being told? Bhagavad Gita doesn't tell about the four regulative principles: no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. So, like that, Guru Maharaj. I'm asking Madhuri, na, asking, in in this book, Krishna told us, "Do we follow the four regulative principles? Do 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 we follow the four ที่ได้อธิบายไว้ว่าเราจะต้องรักษาสิ่งสี่ข้อซึ่งในพระกฏคิตาเนี่ยหาไม่เห็น So here in the 16th chapter we're reading this today the 16th chapter is describing divine and demoniac qualities so devotees cultivate the divine qualities and these qualities include cleanliness mercy austerity and truthfulness มาอธิบายนะคะบอกว่าในในบทที่สิบหกนี้นั่นแหละนะคะที่กระชาอธิบายซึ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยท่านอธิบายถึงธรรมชาติผิดและธรรมชาติมาซึ่งในการบรรยายเห็นธรรมชาติผิดเนี่ยท่านบอกว่าท่านก็อธิบายถึงความสะอาดความสัจจะความเมตตาและก็สมถะ Lord Krishna never ate meat or fish or eggs กระชาเนี่ยทรงไม่เคยรับประทานเนื้อสัตว์ไข่ปลาทุกชนิด Krishna says offer him a leaf flower Fruit, water. Lord Krishna says the devotees of Krishna are relieved from sin because they eat food which is first of all offered in sacrifice. And there's no, there's no killing, there's no sacrifice of animals allowed in the Kali Yuga. And if you want to see the four principles, you read Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. It describes. About description of the age of Kali, and it describes how the uh, personification of the religious principles is in a form of a bull, and the bull stands on four legs, which represent the four principles of religion. จะมีการอธิบายเกี่ยวกับกระบือนะคะว่าหลักธรรมของเราเนี่ยกาลยุกในธรรมชาติของกาลินเนี่ยจะเป็นยังไงแล้วก็กระบือเนี่ยเราจะขาของเขาจะโดนตัดไปอะไรเดี๋ยวแก้ขาดอีก It's specifically mentioned satyam socham daya tapa satyam Truthfulness, socham, cleanliness, daya, mercy, tapa, austerity. The four legs of religion are quoted there in the Srimad Bhagavatam first canto. <laughs> so I will send you the exact verse. Later. Later, I will send you the exact verse with the, the, the these uh, details. But it's clearly stated the four principles: satyam, socham, daya, tapa. 
ในบทนี้นะอธิบายสัจจมสุยังดายังสัมปะถึงสี่ครับ So these are, these are the pillars of religion, and it's stated in the scriptures. And Lord Krishna also mentions to Arjuna, because you are not, because you are without sin, because you are sinless, so you can understand this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. So the problem is the people you're talking to are not sinless, and that's why they can't understand the Bhagavad Gita. And so they invent so many, so many statements to justify their sinful activities. And people will say, "Oh, you can eat whatever you feel like," and they say, "Oh, it's all right. You can eat fish. Fish is the fruit of the sea." And the people will take the fish from the sea, and they say, "Oh, this is just like the fruit of the sea. There's not nothing wrong. No, it's sinful." But the most sinful thing. Is to eat cow flesh, to kill the cow, and to eat cow flesh because the cow is the mother. The Vedas say there are seven mothers, right? There's the mother, our own, own mother, mother of the body. There is the nurse. There is a, the wife of the guru. There is the wife of the king. There is a, uh, the earth, Bumi, is also mother. The cow is also mother. Likely, there are seven mothers. <laughs> People are so sinful; they kill their own mother in the form of the cow and eat the meat. Although it's clearly stated in all the scriptures, people don't care to hear the scriptures. They're demons. Why do people like to eat meat so much? Because they like the taste of blood. So you like. You should drink the milk of the cow. The milk of the cow is a natural transformation of the blood of the cow. So we can support everything. We can support the regulative principles. We can support our principles with scriptures and by logic also, by clear argument. We can defeat all these nonsense rascals. <laughs> เราสามารถโต้กับพวกเขาได้พวกผู้คนที่โง่ครับ 
So this is why we are trying to preach Krishna consciousness, to educate people what they should do, what they are supposed to eat, and what they are not supposed to eat. You will see tomorrow, chapter 17 discusses food in the modes and the food in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. You will see what you should eat and what you shouldn't. All right, any other question? Yes, good day. I've got a question from Yogita Mataji. Yes. Any messages to that? Okay. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Please accept my humble obeisances. Pranams. Gurudev, uh, like you mentioned earlier, there are people who ask that they, they say that there should be more than these two qualities, demonic and uh, divine. And uh, I happen to have such people who I know in the family circle, and that's what even they commented. And they give uh, philosophical arguments based on scriptures to support themselves. And they're doing all the materialistic prayers that they need to do to cover themselves up and they feel confident that no, our next life we are going to be humans and we're going to be in good families. Nothing is going to take anything away from us. And they continuing with the behavior that they are, at times arrogant or rude with other people. And what happens to such people who are there? Well, as you say, they'll come back, they'll probably come back to the same situation, take birth again and again in that same situation. We'll never get, never get free of birth and death like that. <laughs> แล้วแถมเขาเนี่ยมีความมั่นใจกับสิ่งที่เขาปฏิบัติและสิ่งที่เขาทําโดยให้คําอ้างอิงจากเอ่อจากพระเวทแบบที่เขาอ่านมาแ
Just like there's the pastime of Maharaj Niga, who was giving so much charity, and he was thinking he would enjoy. But he became a lizard in the well, because he made one mistake, one little mistake. Mm. He gave the same cow away to two Brahmins. So he had to suffer for the sin of stealing from a Brahmin. Although he gave so many cows in charity, he got reactions of stealing from a Brahmin because by mistake he gave the one cow to two different Brahmins without knowing about it. And for that re reason he had to take birth as a lizard in a well. Mm. ก็ตอบว่าซึ่งเขาไม่รู้ว่าทีนี้เขาทําเนี่ยมันดีมันดีจริงหรือเปล่าหรือมันจะส่งผลกระทบให้เขาอย่างไรบ้างนะซึ่
พราะอย่างในโปรดิวเซอร์รู้สึกว่าเวลาศึกษาพระเวทเนี่ยก็เป็นอารมณ์เดียวกันคือแบบว่ามัวมัวแต่หาข้อมูลหาข้อมูลเก็บไว้แล้วก็อ,อันชนะอันมากชันรู้เยอะกว่าเธออะไรอย่างนี้เราควรแต่ว่าการศึกษาพระเวทที่ถูกต้องจริงๆเนี่ยควรเป็นอย่างไร So proper way as s r i l a p r a p a t a t us we will read a section from the scripture and then we should explain it and discuss it together สิ่งที่ศิลปะพระองค์ได้สอนให้กับเราก็คือเราเราจะอ่านส่วนหนึ่งจากพระเวทแล้วเนี่ยเราควรที่จะพูดคุยเกี่ยวกับตรงนั้น It's not just only simply read the book but we should read a section you read a paragraph or you read one sloka and then you discuss it the, the meanings and what points what information is there what What is, what is uh, points of interest which we should bring to attention, and any point maybe you don't understand. So we should read the scriptures like that. You know, it should be interactive. You should discuss it together with the devotees. Generally, one person will be selected as a speaker, and they will speak for some time, and then. That will be discussed with the other members of the audience. They will put questions, or they will bring up points for discussion. So this is this is the better way to just to read the scriptures. Okay, so we will stop now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Archana for her translation. I thank Antaranga Gopal for his translation. And thank Nimai Sachituta Prabhu for his service, and Sumaduri for her service, and all the devotees for their support. s r i l a Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. And we'll be back tomorrow night, chapter 17. Hare Krishna. s r i l a Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Yeah.